Hi everyone, I'm Alessia and I do my PhD in Cognitive Neuroscience of Language. I'm currently at my second year and I thought it's time to start giving you some of my tips, some of the working strategies of how to manage time, stress, your work, your life, doing the PhD at the same time. Why are you always freaking out when you stand on stage and you're about to present your work? And most importantly, how to deal with this? If that's your problem, please stay tuned and we are going to discuss it together. Well, it turns out that recently I have been giving quite a lot of talks just because it's the middle, the second year of my PhD and I kind of get some preliminary results that I can talk about and I'm actually willing to share the information and getting feedback. And more than that, I am now currently supervising, well, mostly mentoring several people in my lab. Yesterday, they were giving a final poster presentation for their two-month internship in the lab in order to give them some tips just before they're presenting because we've been working on that poster for like a month. And so I created a compilation of several tips that can be of help to them. Why not sharing it with you? So here I am. <laughs> to start with, feeling anxious when you're giving your talks or presentations during your PhD is completely normal, especially if you're giving a talk at a conference or you're giving a seminar or you're presenting in front of your supervisors. In all those situations, the stakes are very high because you're presenting for someone whose competences most likely are a lot more profound than yours and you want to make a good impression. And of course, the self-doubt and imposter syndrome are something that goes with the stakes being high. To add on that, most of us, we're just perfectionists. I know it's not a very simple thing to get rid of. So for me, I think the key point in any preparation to any presentation or talk is self-confidence. It doesn't matter how much of a preparation you have to do in order to feel confident, but you have to go through it. You have to feel confident, you have to feel prepared, you have to feel like you know what you're talking about, you know your material. Like if you need to write your text and rehearse for weeks before the presentation, this is okay as long as that makes you feel confident. Practice, 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 it's always the key. I personally find that writing down all of your text of the speech is very helpful but as long as you don't learn it by heart just because standing on stage might be very stressful and if you get lost or you lose your line of thought that might be tricky to bring it back if you just memorize the text of your speech so the thing that i always use is nice visuals you put as many graphs that you actually understand as possible put the most important keywords on the slide and bold and try to not put too much information in the slide in the same idea of just having a quick grasp at your slide and instantly understanding what you were meant to be talking about. And of course, practicing in front of your colleagues, in front of the mirror, or even recording yourself and then re-watching it helps a lot. But again, that's all about self-confidence. It's about enjoying your presentation as much, knowing that it's done in a good way, being sure that your data is fresh and updated, that all gives you confidence. So if that's something that seems important to you, not to others, but to you, I think you should do it before the presentation. Another thing that we should definitely talk about is the audience. They say that for every employer, you get to change your own CV as motivational letter. The same thing goes for talks. Don't hesitate to adapt the presentation as a function of the audience. Be as explicative as possible. Just just because you want people to get what you're talking about, otherwise you're just wasting not only their, but also your time. If those are peers who are working in slightly related, but quite different topics, I prefer to always do a very clear introduction of their method, 
of what other people are doing. If most of the people are already familiar with the field, you of course can skip the basic knowledge, but try to focus on particularities. What you are doing that the other people were not doing. It has to be clear. It has to be all the time a story. Uh, for that, it's very useful to structure your talk just in the similar way that you do with your paper, for example. In the introduction, you talk about what other people have done. You identify basically a hole, a gap in the knowledge. You propose your own method to fill in this gap. And then in the discussion, you will make some conclusions of how your work contributed to the field. I think for me, understanding this structure and the logic of reasoning for every project, in the ideal world, I want everyone who just listened to my topic to understand and to be able to formulate questions to me and contribute to the discussion. So I really want to make sure that everyone is understanding what I'm talking about. I know that's not all all the time the case at the university, for example, when you're just trying to do is give a presentation and hope that no one asks you any questions. This is not the reason you are given the presentations during your PhD. Think of it as of an explaining your project so that people, those who are sitting in the audience, would want to become your collaborator, would want to give you some tips and advice without any doubt, leave some of the information for questions. You can divide them into like those boxes with borders in between the cages that are kind of blurry in a sense that if they're asking a question, you can easily place it in one of the cases. And like this, you would bring a story that you already know, even though the question was not exactly what you expected at first, but it would find a question you can always bring to the table some other interesting points that you maybe wanted to discuss or at least that you know how to discuss. After all, it is always fine to say, I don't know. I'm reading this very nice practical book about the McKinsey method and I'm learning a lot about how to deal with clients. And I think that's one of the most apparent intellectual traits, being able to say, I don't know but I can find it out and actually find it out and maybe even following up on that person if that's something who you know or who you think it might be interesting to create a contact or some kind of a tiny collaboration. Don't hesitate to follow up on their questions even after your talk and don't just say it, do it. In general, what helped me is starting from a low stakes environment, given presentations, be it related to academia to my project or to something completely unrelated maybe talking about my project at a different angle doing the popularization of science personally i did a TikTok <laughs> talking about my work and that was so much fun i think that all contributed to the better understanding of the project and again to my self-confidence another thing that helped me a lot is teaching just because during my teaching semester i had to give 12 talks lessons of three hours each well of course that's not all the time me talking but that prepared me to talk freely and knowing how to grasp the attention of the people which is after all the most important thing another tip that helps me is to talk a lot about practical details my project involves lots of management coordination it's human research i can talk a lot about how we acquire data and what are the difficulties, the description of my data set that all helps your audience to get involved. And then starting from this level of involvement, you can actually go to deeper topics like theory or interpreting your results. It's another way to improve the engagement of the audience. I think that's it for today's video. Why we are freaking out before going on stage and presenting our own work, by the way. And then we also dealt with some of the ways of how to tackle those problems. I hope that was useful. Be skeptical, add whatever you think is important. Don't forget to subscribe to see where this brings me in the future. You're more than welcome on this channel. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.